I, I don't have much time with you, and, and I wanted to get that out of the way because I'm sure the viewers have that obvious question. But let me talk about um, uh, the vice president here. And we heard from Senator uh, Harris uh, in that uh, piece from Arlette about uh, her refuting a claim that the vice president made this week that the 1994 crime bill that he wrote did not um, contribute to mass incarceration. I want you to listen to former President Bill Clinton. This is uh, President Clinton who signed that into law in 2015. I signed a bill that made the problem worse. And I want to admit it. In that bill, there were longer sentences. And most of these people are in prison under state law, but the federal law set a trend. And that was overdone. We were wrong about that. President Clinton says that, that they were wrong about that. Senator Harris has said that it contributed to mass incarceration. Why is it uh, uh, Vice President Biden a admitting what we're hearing from the former president? What was happening in the early 90s, um, the reaction was an overcorrection to a very real issue. But we are going to see some policy rollouts from um, our campaign very soon, Victor. I know folks have questions so, about so, what uh, is Vice President Biden's criminal but, uh, justice is policy. It, is it now the, the, those are going to come. Now but I mean, the, campaign's the campaign's position that the crime bill did contribute to mass incarceration? <laughs> Victor, I think the vice, with the vice, the vice president, uh, his comments speak for themselves. What is very well, clear his, is this: but his comment was that it does not contribute to mass incarceration. The former president who signed his, it said and, it and did. And if we, and if look, Victor, if we play the whole clip, what he also said was his comment was what he also said was that the majority of folks that are incarcerated were incarcerated at the state level. And there's and a reason for that. Let me put up. Let me put up the truth in sentencing and sentencing incentives and there, here. And I mean, there is a reason for but that. But there's a reason. Let me put it up. Let I me mean, put, just... put it up on the screen, guys. The truth in sentencing section of the 1994 crime bill. This is page 21. It incentivized. Uh, it offered billions of dollars to build new uh, correctional facilities if states would increase the percentage of convicted violent offenders, increase the average prison time, increase the percentage of the sentence was there. Did this bill not incentivize putting more people in jail and keeping them there longer? The, uh, Victor. I no, I am not going to sit here and tell you the crime bill was perfect. There was some, there was some really great preventative things that it did. It took on the NRI, but NRA, and then there was an overcorrection. What you're describing was an overcorrection. There was a reach. Some folks went too far. The bill wasn't perfect. Republicans fought to put a lot of things in that bill. Democrats fought, Democrats fought to get a lot of things out of the bill. But at the end of the day, Victor, at the end of the day, no one is suggesting that what has happened, what has ravaged communities um, over the last 27 yeah. years, uh, does not need to be fixed. No one is suggesting that there is not a real issue. There's not a real problem or a real right. issue. And I'm here to tell you the Vice President Biden will have roll out. You'll see a criminal justice policy soon. We are going to continue to have to have this conversation about the crime bill um, all, all right. throughout the campaign trail. But we're also going to put forward some policies, Victor. So just well, wait and see. Give us a minute. Wait we, and see. We will look forward to those. Simone Sanders, thanks so much. You know, if Simone Sanders is going to keep turning in performances like this, she might want to go ahead and pass out her resume and start looking for a new line of work. Given how broad her shoulders are, I recommend the Dallas Cowboys for a start. This is who Bernie Sanders had working for him, and you wonder why Bernie got spanked at the polls. And now she's working her same magic for Joe Biden. Before we go any farther, I just want to remind people that if you want to pull up the rear, if you want to be the last one to know anything, just go ahead and keep listening to the white media. Let them be the ones who you get your information from, and that way you can be the last to know. On the other hand, for those of you who actually want to be in the know, and you're not satisfied with the cutting edge, you get your news and views from the black media. Because we're not cutting edge, we are bleeding edge. We don't merely tell you what's going on, we tell you the future before it happens. And our batting average is far higher than the white media. Days ago, I was the one who posted a video, Arrogant Biden stands by the 94 crime bill, but who else voted for it? And one of the things that I hammered over and over and over and over again was the fact that the main defense, the rhetorical defense that has been used and would continue to be used to defend Biden from criticism is that you can't say the 94 crime bill resulted in the prison industrial complex. Why? That was the states who did it. That was the states. And who was it who told you that that was a load of crap? 
And here's a couple of excerpts from the last video that I did where I called out this tactic and I pointed out that it was going to be used. Whenever black people bring up the incarceration state, or rather the black incarceration state as it should be called, you'll always find right-wing funded think tanks and left-wingers who claim to be criminal justice reform advocates who are all tripping over each other screaming in unison that the majority of prisoners in the United States are not in federal prison, they're in state and local prisons, as if anybody has ever argued that point. And they will all scream from the rafters that the majority of people incarcerated in the United States aren't there because of drug convictions, rather for violent criminal convictions. So all the talk about how the drug war fueled the black incarceration machine is wrong. So no matter what any white power propagandists try to tell you, the states are not acting independently of the federal government, not when it comes to this black incarceration project. The states got the green light to mass incarcerate black people from the federal government. They damn sure couldn't have done it if the feds hadn't subsidized it. And they damn sure wouldn't be able to do it if the feds wanted to stop it. So no, you don't have any pointy-headed white supremacist academics, whether they be on the left or the right, who try to lie and say that, well, it's the states who did it, not the feds, it's the states. Now that was days ago when I warned you that the white media with their academics and their political types that they would put on TV and give them endless airtime, I told you exactly the lie that they were going to use. And in comes Simone Sanders yesterday to prove me right. We, and if, look, Victor, if we play the whole clip, what he also said was, his comment was, what he also said was, that the majority of folks that are incarcerated were incarcerated at the state level. And there's and a reason for that. Let me put up, let me put up the truth in sentencing and sentencing incentives and there, here. And I mean, there is a reason but for that. But there's a reason. Let me put it up. I mean, let me put, just... it, put it up on the screen, guys, the truth in sentencing section of the 1994 crime bill. This is page 21. It incentivized, uh, it offered billions of dollars to build new uh, correctional facilities if states would increase the percentage of convicted violent offenders, increase the average prison time, increase the percentage of the sentence was there. Did this bill not incentivize putting more people in jail and keeping them there longer? The, uh, Victor, I no, I am not going to sit here and tell you the crime bill was perfect. There was some, there was some really great preventative things that it did. It took on the NRI, but NRA, and then there was an overcorrection. What you're describing was an overcorrection. There was a reach. Some folks went too far. The bill wasn't perfect. Republicans fought to put a lot of things in that bill. Democrats fought, Democrats fought to get a lot of things out of the bill. You see what she just said. There were Democrats who were trying to take things out of the bill. This is just her trying to do a roundabout, just trying to tell the same lie from another angle. And now that she got cornered on, we exposed your little lie that it wasn't the states and local governments acting alone. The feds were leading the charge. Like, well, uh, there was some overreach. Uh, it went too far. That's sanitizing it. Like Hillary Clinton saying that stop and frisk was inefficient. That you see Simone Sanders out there selling the same soap and to sit there and tell a lie like the Democrats were trying to take things out of the bill. Well, one of the people who wasn't taking anything out of the bill was Democrat Senator Joe Biden, who said, and I quote, we do everything but hang people for jaywalking. He was bragging about what was in Biden's law, the 94 crime bill. He was bragging about it, bragging about how tough it was. He wasn't sitting there saying, there's some overreach here, you know. This gives way too much power to prosecutors and to, and to the system, and, and we're going to be railroading people. He wasn't talking like that at all. He's sitting, he was bragging when he's, what, what was happening was you had some Republicans saying, well, are you sure that Biden's law is tough enough? And Biden was going, we do everything but hang people for jaywalking. Look up that quote. We do everything but hang people for jaywalking. He was proud of how strident Biden's law was. He was proud of the 94 crime bill. And here you got Simone Sanders trying to rewrite history. And she's trying to make it sound like, oh, Democrats were trying to take things out of the bill. Who the hell was it? Who was trying to take things out of the bill? Was it Nancy Pelosi? She was a congresswoman from California back in 94. And she voted for the 1994 crime bill. Didn't take a damn thing out of it. Uh, maybe she was talking, perhaps Simone Sanders was thinking about Chuck Schumer. He was in the House of Representatives back in 94. He wasn't senator yet. Oh, wait a minute. He voted for the crime bill, too. Well, maybe she was thinking about Bernie Sanders. Wait, 
he voted for the crime bill too. Well, well, how about James Clyburn, the only black representative from South Carolina? Oh, wait, he voted for the crime bill too. And so did Cynthia McKinney. And so did Kwesi and Fume. Yeah. And Barney Frank, the quintessential gay liberal from Massachusetts, who's supposed to be the tip of the spear when it comes to progressive policies, he voted for the 94 crime bill. Didn't take a dang thing out of it. Nobody was filibustering it. Nobody was trying to find a way to jam it up in committee. They would just said, well, either you're for it or you're against it. Nobody was taking anything out of it. So it's a lie that Simone Sanders is telling about, well, Democrats are trying to take things out of it. Joe Biden wasn't taking a damn thing out of it. He was telling the Republicans, oh, this, this law is tougher than anything that you Republicans are asking for. So what the hell is she talking about? She's telling bald faced lies here. In fact, if you look at the vote totals for the 94 crime bill, what you find is that 188 Democrats voted for it. Only 46 Republicans voted for the 94 crime bill for Biden's law. And if you look at who decided to go against it, 64 Democrats said no, compared with 131 Republicans. Now, this is not to say the Republicans are the black man's friend. They're not. They're both the right and left wings of the same white supremacist demon that we're fighting against. But the point is, this is one of the little internal games that they play. Well, we're for the law, but we want it to be under a Republican president. We don't want Bill Clinton to get the credit for it. We don't want this to be get passed under a Democrat. It needs to be passed under a Republican. That's all that that meant. The Republicans were all for it. It's just a matter of, it's the game of, well, we don't want the tough on crime measure to get passed under a Democrat president. It's them playing games as they try to all vie to appeal to the casual racists, that is, white moderates. That's the game that they're playing. But Simone Sanders telling bald-faced lies about how the Democrats were trying to take things out of the bill. Gee, was it the 188 Democrats who voted for it? Were they the ones trying to take things out? You had more Democrats who were for Biden's law than you had Republicans against it. So don't let them run that game on you. I was the one who warned you about it because I understand that if you want to know when a white supremacist or their black bootlick is lying, see if their lips are moving. Who was it who broke down the 94 crime bill? I was the one who broke down for you the so-called truth in sentencing provisions in the 94 crime bill that demanded that if the states wanted a piece of that juicy $12 billion that Joe Biden was, was dangling in front of them, first they had to put laws on the books that the federal government mandated. The federal government said, here are the laws we want you states to enact. Oh, sure, sure. We're not forcing you to do it, but we know that you guys are strapped for cash. And since Congress has the power of the person is the only group that has the ability to print money. Well, if you guys are looking to build prisons and if you're looking for an infusion of cash, because God knows we, that you're starved for it. Well, you can get it. But first, you got to put laws on the books that the federal government demands. And I was the one who broke down for you some of the parts of the 94 crime bill, how the money makes it to the states and practically all of it, at least three quarters of it, it goes to nothing but incarceration and the tools of incarceration like the police, judges and probationary services. I broke that down for you and CNN, the Klan Nazi network, as usual, pulling up the rear. But I told you what the defense was. Anytime some idiot tries to say you can't blame Biden for that and you can't blame the 94 crime bill. It's all about the states. The states were doing that. The states Well, you just saw what happened to Simone Sanders. And yeah, I would imagine that the chumps over at the clown Nazi network crib note from the black media. Because it's no accident that here they come. When it's time to shut down Simone Sanders, first thing that they do is they go to the talking points that Professor Truth put out there. And you saw how easily that happened. The guy didn't have to get into some long, drawn-out tongue wrestling match with her. Didn't have to go back and forth with her. All he had to do was say, let's take a look at this truth and sentencing provision here. Let's take a look at how the federal government talked to the states and told them, we're not going to give you any money unless you enact the laws that we prescribe. The federal government dictating to the states what their punishments were going to be. And what was really interesting was Simone Sanders' reaction to that. 
not what she said, but rather what she didn't say. Yeah, yeah, we know she's going to do some splaining because that's her job. If you ever wonder why it is that she keeps finding work with these campaigns, that's because this is the one of the few Negroes who can dependably get out there and sell the soap, no matter how blatantly anti-black the candidate is. Doesn't matter if it's Bernie the bigot Sanders or if it's Joe Klansman of Scranton Biden with his cokehead son. As I told you, Simone Sanders is not there because she's smart. Clearly she ain't. She sits here and says this garbage. And the point that I'm trying to make is what she didn't say was, wait a minute, Victor, uh, all this stuff you're talking about, this truth and sentence, I've never heard about this. What, 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 where are you getting this from? Um, how is that in there? Well, I, I don't know if you're right about that. Well, what's your source? Notice that Simone Sanders didn't do that. She went from, it was the states, it was the states, to as soon as the guy points out just the truth and sentencing provision alone, she immediately on a dime goes, well, you know, uh, the crime bill's not perfect. Ah, so what does that tell us? Simone Sanders already knew about the truth and sentencing provision. This is why I keep telling you about the white supremacists and their black bootlicks. They're lying through their teeth. They've always been lying through their teeth. They know that they're lying. What they want to find out is whether or not you know what the lie is. Now, if you get your information from the clowns, the chuckleheads over at the breakfast schlubs, or if you're one of the idiots who actually thinks that BET is going to tell you something, or if you're listening to Tom Joyner, or if you're listening to Joy the Jackass, Reed, Roly Poly, Martin, or any of the rest of these black bootlicks, these fakers, frauds, and phonies, you wouldn't know all this. On the other hand, if you listen to the black media, the new voices of black media, if you happen to be one of the enlistees in the B1 Brigade, you already knew about this. You know what the talking points are, and it just goes to show that even one of the addled brain chumps over there at the Klan Nazi network, all they have to do is to simply use one of the talking points from the black media and you shut down the bad guys. This is why I keep telling you guys that you need to take what it is that you hear in places like this and you need to go confront these bastards with it. Hell, if a clown like Victor, what's his name, from CNN, if he could simply bring up the TIS provisions of the 94 crime bill, and Simone Sanders starts stuttering and stammering like a son of a gun. If that's all it takes, what happens if you get one of the B1 Brigadiers in there? You, you see how easy it is. You see that it ain't rocket science. I'm not giving you theoretical anything. I know exactly how to dissect these bastards. I know exactly how to shut them down without it being some long drawn out where we're going to have some tug of war, some war of words. No, I ain't got to go through all that. All I got to do is use one sentence and you're done. All I got to do is just bring up one small point and your entire house of cards comes crashing down. This is the reason why these bastards stay away from the black media. You want to know why it is that Joe Biden ain't about to talk to us? You want to know why it is that Simone Sanders ain't about to let herself get cornered by us? You just saw why. They know about the talking points that we're putting out there. It percolates and circulates because of you guys. You guys are the force multiplier. When you guys give videos like this thumbs up, you help to raise his profile. When you guys repeat the talking points that you hear in places like this, it gets out and about to the point that you got some chumps in the white media. And I'm surprised that Victor, what's his name, still has his job. It's kind of iffy. They might say, well, Victor, you know, you were kind of hard on Simone Sanders. You know, talk about not locking the niggers up. What, what, what the hell is this coming from, buddy? That's the kind of thing that could lo lose you your job. But you saw how it worked, how she got brought down like that. She had no answer for it because she was lying. She knew that she was lying and she actually had somebody who could tell her, no, that whole crap, that dodge, that deflection, that lie about, oh, well, it's the state. See, the states did that. I told you it was a pile of crap. And now Simone Sanders has proven it. But the next step is to confront Biden with it. Because he tries to do the same thing. This is, this is supposed to be what counts as the so-called left wing of American politics. Using the exact same talking points that you would hear on Fox News or right wing hate radio. But this ain't coming from the right wing so-called reactionary wing of American politics. This is called, coming from the so-called progressive wing. And look at how they talk. I mean, it sounds like it came from the Manhattan Institute or the American Heritage Foundation, or any other group of sawed-off right-wingers that you can imagine. But nope, instead this is coming from Joe Biden's little house mammy. This is coming from Simone Sanders, Aunt Jamami Supreme. 
Yeah, I guess after cutting her teeth, telling all sorts of lies for Bernie the Bigot, she figured it's time to graduate to the big leagues now. Yeah, but she ain't big enough for the black media. She can get out there and do all of her crap that she wants. At the end of the day, Joe Biden has a lot to answer for. He has not done anything to repeal any of the crime bill. He has not done anything to either reduce the sentences for crack cocaine or to increase the sentences for powder cocaine. But then again, given his son Hunter's longstanding cocaine use, no wonder Biden ain't too eager to do that. Because if he started demanding harsher punishments for powder cocaine, he might as well call his son and say, well, son, here's the number for your probationary officer. And uh, I guess we'll be seeing you in about 25 years. So no, Biden understood exactly what he was doing. This was racially coded. And this is a little trick that's been going on since the 19th century. When slavery ended, it became a matter of let's find any activities that black people do. It's not even a matter of are black people more likely to do it. Black people are no more likely to use marijuana than white people. In fact, white people are slightly more likely than black people to use marijuana. And yet, who do you see getting arrested? Who do you see going to jail? Who do you see doing long stretches in prison? Black people. So why, why the world are you not seeing white people get that? Because it's a matter of we're going to, first of all, try to target things that we think black people are more likely to do. And then we're going to write laws that criminalize things that previously were either misdemeanors or not crimes altogether. And if it turns out that white people are doing it as well, well, we're just going to overlook that. But that's what Joe Biden's coming from. What are the punishments going to be? What should Joe Biden's punishment be? He has not done anything to atone for his crime, and he knew it when he did it. He is sitting here uh, apparently expecting us to overlook it. Overlook what? He hasn't told us what he did wrong. Some of you idiots out there say, well, can we just forgive? Forgive what? He hasn't said that he did anything wrong. How can I forgive someone who has not come to me and said, I have sinned and here's what I did? And in order to be forgiven, not only do you have to ask for absolution, but you also have to make recompense. You got to show what you're going to do to make this right. Joe Biden hasn't done anything. No, he told the truth back in the 1970s, that little interview that he did with the People's Paper, which you can also get excerpts from in my earlier video, A Brief History of Joe Biden's Racism. He already spoke on that one. He said, I'll be damned if I'm going to pay for something that my daddy did or that my grandfather did. Yeah, well, how about the racism that Joe Biden did? How about Biden's law? Is he willing to go ahead and pay for that? Nope, far as he's concerned, I ain't paying for that either. So I'm not going to pay for anything my grandpappy did. I'm not going to pay for anything that my daddy did. And I ain't, I'm not even going to pay for anything that I did. This is an evil bastard. And now he's seeking the presidency. This is a man without conscience, without morality, without decency. He is a creature of anti-black racism. And Simone Sanders is running interference for him. Shows you how low some black folks will stoop. Yeah, white supremacy understands that if they're going to be able to sell black folks up the river, they're going to have to get some of our own to help them do it. And this explains James Clyburn. He's been doing the most to stump for Joe Biden out in South Carolina. South Carolina is one of the early Democrat primaries, and it's also got a substantial number of black folks. So far as they're concerned, it's a good litmus test for whether or not Biden can hoodwink us. Oh, we'll go ahead and get some black faces out there. Live. Hey, J uh, James Clyburn, old Negro Jim Clyburn. He's going to have his kids and his in-laws who have been eating because Democrats power brokers like Biden and the Clintons throw him a couple of crumbs, make sure that they get some El Cheapo freaking government contracts and some company jobs and such. Make sure that you throw a couple of a couple of pennies at the Negro operatives that we got in the black community. And those guys will tell the rest of the Negroes on the plant on the open air plantations known as the ghettos. Tell them, oh, you can't say anything about Biden. Biden, he's on our side. Why? He's so good to us. He, the black man has no better friend than Joe Biden. Yeah, and you'll believe it if you don't have the black media there to go ahead and tell you who and what Joe Biden actually is. But this is to show the impact that the black media is having. We got the bastards on the run, and you see that the talking points that you get from places like this are not hypothetical. They are real. We are teaching you not merely how to think. We're also teaching you what to say. And we're not teaching you to debate these bastards. We don't believe in debate when it comes to intelligent black society. The B1 Brigade doesn't practice how to debate. The B1 Brigade practices how to win. 
I don't believe in debating any more than Dr. John Henry Clark did. He said, I only debate my equals, all others I teach. And that's exactly what's supposed to happen if you got your head on straight and you actually know the facts. Malcolm X never conducted a debate in his life. He simply taught all of these white supremacists that, no, you haven't gotten away with anything. I know exactly how your sick system works, and now I'm going to explain it to you. And after that debate was over, wasn't no debate. That's how it's supposed to go. If you got the facts on your side, if you actually got all of your information together, all you do is just present the facts and watch the other guy go, well, um, I, well, we know about that, but, but okay, well, well the law is not perfect, you see, but, but, but black folks are going to see that Joe Biden is really there for, that's what Simone Sanders is reduced to. And this is what Biden's scared of. He's scared of this kind of talk getting out. And the white media is scared of it too. Because as Neely Fuller taught, white supremacy believes in controlling both sides of the conversation. That way, you have a choice between white supremacist candidate A, Bernie Sanders, um, I want people to know that, uh, you know, if, if maybe Trayvon Martin and, and Eric Garner were, were white like me, then they probably wouldn't be dead today. Oh, this white man, he understands. Uh, what about reparations, Bernie? No. What about Joe Biden? Oh, I want you to know that my record on civil rights, why I was in favor of, of integration, well, except for the busing and, and except for too many black kids in our schools. And, and well, I'm really not all that thrilled with all these Negroes in Congress. And Barack Obama, though, he's OK because he's he's clean because he, he's he's clean cut because he had a white mother who taught him. So, you know, I, I, that, thank God for that. The, this is supposed to be your choice. So you have a choice between a mouth frothing racist and a racist who occasionally wipes his chin, though never combs his hair, that's supposed to be what constitutes a choice for you. White supremacy believes that you can have a choice between white supremacy candidate A and white supremacy candidate B. I say don't make a choice between those bastards at all. As Kwame Touré, the brilliant, some of you might remember him as Stokely Carmichael before he changed his name to something more African. You might remember the brother said, that people were always telling him, well, we still got to vote. I mean, even if so, you know, you got to choose the lesser of two evils. And he said it best. He said, a moral man does not choose evil at all. And he was right. Don't let the white media and their white government lie to you and tell you, you got to choose between a evil and evil. You got to choose between bad and worse. That means the bad guys always win and you never get what you're supposed to have. No, you're supposed to look at that. And if you don't like the choice that's in front of you, you're supposed to exercise free will and say, I'm not playing the game. I don't like the rules and I damn sure don't like who I got to play with. That's what you're supposed to do. Instead of letting the bad guys dictate terms to you, you're supposed to be the one dictating the terms. That's how you take control of the situation. Or would you like to remain on white supremacy's treadmill for another 150 years? No, Simone Sanders got caught on the carpet on this one. And what happened to her, you better believe that all the little campaign assistants for Bernie the Bigot and Kamala, Empty Suit Harris, and the rest of the fakers, frauds, and phonies in the Democratic contender field for president, you better believe that Beto O'Rourke, or as I like to call him, Mr. Lip Service, because he's just like Obama, did more lip service. All of them watched what happened to Simone Sanders. They know what the talking point was. They know it damn sure didn't come from CNN. They know that that came from outside of CNN. They know the external pressure was being exerted on them. That what we were saying here has now percolated into the realm of the official white media. They know that. And they also know that the same problem that they got that Biden has is a problem that Kamala Harris has. Because Kamala Harris was just like Biden. She was not letting anyone out of prison. She wasn't trying to figure out how to release nonviolent offenders from prison. She went all the way to Supreme Court to fight for California's right to violate the Fourth Amendment and make it where we'll, who gives a damn about cruel and unusual punishment? We got to make sure that all of these black folks stay locked up regardless of if they committed a violent crime or not, regardless of if they're even guilty or not. So they understand that the exact same anti-black zealotry that threatens Joe Biden's campaign and has also undermined Bernie the bigot, that's, that happens to be a sin that they've all partaken in. Kamala Harris understands that as California's top cop, she knows that this is the exact same thing that could hurt her. Again, she's done a pretty good job of sinking her campaign, but this is what we got to do. We got to stay on the bastards next, and that's where you guys come in. You got to make sure y'all got to be on a jihad. 
spread these talking points. Don't just come to the house of the Professor Truth Bill. Don't just come to my channel and give me an amen and an attaboy. That ain't going to be enough. We need you guys out there spreading the word, spreading this word. Make it where whenever there's somebody trying to talk about Joe Biden, you remind them that Joe Biden gave money to the states if the states would institute harsher laws. Make sure that people understand that there is a direct connection between the federal government and the hypercharging of the state and local prison complexes. The states didn't have the money to build prisons. Most of the crime bill funding from the 94 crime bill went for the construction of prisons. Nine billion dollars alone went for the construction of prisons. The states didn't have that money. It was given to them by the federal government. You have a direct connection between federal policy and what happened at the state and local level. So the lie that we've had all these good white liberals out here talking about, who nothing more than left-wing and right-wing anti-black propaganda. This doesn't matter if they work for the Heritage Foundation or if they work for the Brookings Institute. Same thing, they all hate, when it comes to black people, they're all ideologically on the same page and they all spew the exact same talking points. You would hear nothing any different from the Claremont Institute than you would hear from any other left-wing so-called think tank. They understood that what they were doing was lying. They hoped that they were propagandizing the public, that they were indoctrinating the public with the lie that no, no, no matter what these Negroes try to tell you, the the high, the mass incarceration state, the black incarceration state, that was the result of local and state lawmakers, local and state enforcement. That wasn't the feds. That wasn't the feds at all. And then you follow the money. You follow the money and you learn everything. And then all of a sudden, I'd like to know, aren't we going to have some good white academics come to the rescue for old Simone Sanders and explain, no, 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 uh, the federal government gave billions to the states and did demand that before the states could have a piece of that $12 billion pie that all the states were drooling for, well, they would have to change their laws. But, but you know, uh, this would have happened without the feds. No, the states didn't have the money to build prisons. That's why they were all so eager to get a piece of that money. They needed that money. They didn't have it on their own. The states don't have the ability to be able to print their own money or to be able to go into debt like that. The federal government can, but the states can't. So yeah, the feds were the only game in town and they knew it. This was a partnership between federal and state and local law enforcement. And the mission was we are going to build the biggest, strongest black incarceration machine since the plantations. And we're going to make sure the tax dollars build it. Who's on board? We're all going to get on code. And I got $12 billion to make it worth your while. That's what Biden did. So family, you need to understand exactly the nature of what it is that we're up against, but also understand the nature of the power that we've got. I do not deal in hypotheticals. I do not deal in wishful thinking. When you listen to what is said from Professor Black Truth, what you are hearing is from somebody who studied the white supremacist my entire freaking life. I know exactly what their lies are. I know that they're wrong and I know where they're wrong. And I know what the perfect silver bullet is to shatter their arguments into a million irreparable pieces. I mean, I spell it out for you guys so simple that even a half-wit who works over at CNN even one of the tried and true black bootlicks, because let's not pretend as if just because Victor, what's his name, decided to ask one question. Just one, he didn't even ask a question, just that he brought up the money, where the money went for the crime bill. Is that supposed to make a saint out of a sinner? No, let, family, let's not go calling ourselves and making somebody an honorary member of the B1 Brigade simply because they did one question. Black folks are too easily impressed. No, as far as I'm concerned, justice is not done until we're the ones staring the bastards in the face and we're the ones who are confronting them. Because they're going to find a friendly audience over at the Caucasian Nazi network. They'll find a, they're going to find a sympathetic audience who, when Simone Sanders gets tongue-tied, they'll let her off the hook, which is exactly what Victor did. He let her off the hook. He knew that that was the bombshell he was going to drop. And as soon as he did, as soon as she goes, oh, that hurt. He was, okay, well, moving on. Commercial break. And now on to a commercial break. He didn't ask what is Biden going to do since he obviously was the one who, he didn't even mention that Joe Biden was the one who wrote the 94 crime bill. 
So before your heart goes all pitter pat because one of the in-house Negroes at the Klan Nazi network decided that he was going to ask one, he was going to bring up a simple point that you already heard from me. And it had the predictable effect of throwing Simone Sanders empty head into a tizzy. Please don't pretend as if somehow that means he's on the side of the angels, because the real question is, why is it that CNN does not mention, does not educate people that Joe Biden wrote the 94 crime bill? Why is it that nobody brings up the fact that he called it Biden's law? Make the bastard wear it. He was proud of it. That is until he started trying to seek political office outside of the cozy confines of Delaware. When he found out that he was going to have to seek higher office, now you got to find a way to deal with all those black folks who you were targeting because now you need their votes. That's part of the reason why Joe Biden has failed in two times and now he's about to make it three for three that he's lost. Every time he's run for president, he falls flat on his face. But Joe Biden knows exactly the game that he's playing. He's running away from the 94 crime bill. And people need to know that he was the one who loved it so much, he tried to call it the Biden law. Okay, fine then, let's go ahead. We're going to call it the Biden law. And no amount of forked-tongued, two-faced, lying skanks like Simone Sanders, no amount of bought and paid for bedwinch bootlicks are going to be able to get him out of this one. You are not going to decide that we're going to blame the states. We're going to blame the states. Well, you can try that. Won't last long. Yes, family, this is what happens simply because we apply the pressure, but it's not enough. Those of you listening to my voice, you guys are the force multiplier, and we need to step it up. I am not interested in influencing the political discourse. I am interested in dominating the political discourse. Every day we're supposed to make it where you got these people sweating bullets and going, oh man, these guys, they're, they're really tearing apart our, our cushy little hustle that we had going. Oh, did you see what they did to Bernie Sanders last night? They confronted him on reparations and confronted him on his vote for the crime bill. And they're sitting here putting the label of Bernie the bigot on him. Oh my God, you know, they're, they're, they're just blowing up everything. And Joe Biden, oh man, they have turned Biden's law into a meme. They've made it where everyone calls the 94 crime bill Biden's law. There, Joe Biden wrote the 94 crime bill? Oh man, his numbers just plummeting across the board to the point that even the white media can't cover it up because I do not believe for an instant that Joe Biden's support in South Carolina or anywhere else is as high as the white media says. Keep in mind, these guys were also saying that Hillary Clinton's numbers were off the chains and I think we all know how that one turned out. So the white media is playing a game right now. There hasn't even been the first primary debate to say nothing of election. So at this point right now, they can get away with saying whatever kind of hocus pocus, phony baloney fiction and fairy tales they want. And they don't pay a price for it because we're so far out from the elections, any of the elections. They don't have to actually prove that they're right. They can just go ahead and say anything. But regardless of whatever kind of white noise that the white media kicks up, we got to make sure that we're there with the truth, the black truth, the truth that the white media desperately wants to suppress because you see the power of what happens merely by bringing up one of the talking points from black media. You saw what happened. Destroyed Simone Sanders' entire little stump speech. Oh, she was so ready. To, she just had her little talking point. If they bring, you know, Simone, you've been a good little mammy for us all this time. And well, you, what do, well, uh, what about the crime bill? Somebody gonna mention the crime bill? Oh, these people, these these black folks who crushed Kamala Harris's campaign, they gonna be talking about the crime bill, and they just hitting Joe Biden with that. And I don't know what we gonna do. Well, what we're going to do is if they bring up the crime bill, you just tell them the incarceration went up at the state and local level. That wasn't the federal government. I mean, just look at the numbers. It's a state and local issue. You just go ahead and bring that up. Just just go ahead and say that. Yeah, but what if they find out about the money? Because the feds, we, the Joe Biden gave $12 billion. What if they find out about that? Oh, they won't find out about that, Aunt Jemima. Here's some butter biscuits for you. And that's the way that it went. That was her prep for these little interviews. But as you see, she knew only one deflection, but she didn't have anything else after that because there is nothing else after that. She brought up something that she thought was going to be a misleading factoid. 
oh, it's the states and local. It was a state issue, a local issue. And then as soon as you bring up um, the federal government gave the states $12 billion to change their laws and the states took the money and changed their laws. But not in that order. That you have to change your laws first before you could apply for any of that 94 crime bill money, which the states did. By the time it was all over, you had something like 42 states that had changed their laws so that they could come into compliance with Biden's law and get a piece of that $12 billion pie. Just swept the nation overnight. Joe Biden knew exactly what he was doing. You go ahead and put a big enough paycheck out there. Yeah, you can make it where the constitutional, no matter what the bent, the political temperament of a state may be, you wiggle enough money in front of them and tell them, hey, we're going to pay you to go after black folks. Well, they'll throw aside whatever pretense of egalitarianism and equality minded whatever that they may pretend to have. You go ahead and put a couple of dollars in front of them and tell them, we're going to go ahead and gang up on these black folks. Then all of a sudden they'll show you where they really stand. Because there was nobody who actually didn't think that this law was being put on the books so they could go after black people. There was no one who thought this law was not being put on the books for the sake of express intent of targeting black people. There's a lot of folks, a lot of people, who committed a grievous sin 25 years ago, and they're desperately hoping that they can keep it under wraps. And that's part of the reason why you're not seeing any of these fakers, frauds, and phonies, the so-called Congressional Black Caucus or Congressional Black Talkers, as they should be known. These guys are not engaging with the black media because they know that we're serious. We tell the truth without favor and without fear. We're not interested in being best buds or being BFFs with any member of the white government. You step into the house, any of the houses, especially the house that Professor Truth built, you better believe first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and check your papers. I got to check you out first whether or not this is somebody who I need to be fooling with or is this somebody who I need to be exposing. On my Twitter page, I posted for you a link that shows exactly how the House of Representatives, not not the Senate, but the House of Representatives, at least how they voted on Biden's law, the 94 crime bill 25 years ago. And some of you were surprised. Understandably, you were surprised at the names you saw, particularly the members of the Congressional Black Caucus. Hey, Bobby Rush. Wasn't Bobby Rush one of the Black Panthers back in the day? That was his ticket to that was his ticket to ride. That's his claim to fame. That's his bona fides with the good folks in Illinois, in the Chicago area. He would tell them, hey, I, I was with the Black Panthers back in the day. Yeah, we was taking on the man. So you better believe I ain't gonna copyright. I ain't gonna let them just be locking brothers up, man. They just locking brothers up. H. Rap Brown said it best that uh, they building. 25 new prisons, that means all them beds can't be for black folks, so we, they just building a box to throw us in. I, we ain't gonna let them get away with that. And what did Bobby Rush do? He voted for the 94 crime bill. And Cynthia McKinney, oh my, Cynthia McKinney, she made her little half-baked presidential run. Cynthia McKinney confronting empire. Yeah, but she's not confronting the American empire. Maybe she's confronting the Soviet empire or the burgeoning Chinese empire or something, but she damn sure ain't confronting the American empire because she voted for the 94 crime bill. Yes, Cynthia McKinney did. Yes. I ain't got to tell you anything about Nancy Pelosi back in the day when she was in the House of Representatives or Chuck Schumer. Both of them, of course, voted for it. And while that doesn't make it right, it's just a matter of, are you really surprised that Nancy Pelosi, who helped to spearhead the mass expulsion of black people from San Francisco, this woman helped to ethnically cleanse San Francisco. San Francisco used to have like a 25 to 30% black population. Well, Nancy Pelosi went ahead and solved that little demographic issue. Now, didn't she? But that's what the hell this woman's about. And Chuck Schumer, same thing. And these guys will get in front of you. Now that they've graduated to the Senate, now they want to get in front of people's faces and talk about how, oh, they're going to be standing up to racism and Donald Trump's so bigoted. Yeah, he's in good company with his good buddies, Nancy and Chuck. But yeah, you got a number of clowns from the congressional black talkers who voted for the 94 crime bill. Go on my Twitter page and click on that link and you go and see who it was from your state. Who support it because Congress being what it is, basically these clowns stay in there until they're basically at death's door. 
So there's a good chance that whoever it was who represents you now, chances are they were in Congress 25 years ago. They, some of them may have made it to the Senate, so you want to be careful. But the thing is, there are a lot of these clowns who actually voted for the crime bill. And it for Biden's law, the black incarcerate, mass incarceration law, and these people don't even talk about it because they know that the white, for 25 years, the white media had a media monopoly. So they were safe. They could hide. They didn't have to say anything. The white media wasn't going to bring it up. Ah, but it's a brand new day now, ain't it? There are voices out here that are getting stronger every day and speaking loud enough to be heard, bringing up their records and making it an issue. And if it's an issue for Biden, what that means is what happens when Bobby Rush runs for re-election? Huh? What happens when you got the rest of these congressional black talkers who the only thing that they did was they may have voted against, or rather, let me rephrase that. They may not have voted for the 94 crime bill, but how many of them led the effort to try to get rid of it or to repeal it or to dismantle it or undermine it or to find ways to make it where, hey, if we're going to be locking black folks up for crack cocaine, it's going to be the same thing for the white ones. And Joe Biden's son, he can go ahead and check into prison first. How many of them actually brought up Joe Biden's felonious little brat and the fact that he's got a sweet tooth for the happy powder? How many of them brought it up? None of them did. There is no need for the Congressional Black Talkers to have any sort of discipline because the Congressional Black Talkers are not a political arm of black society. They are a subsidiary of the administrative arm of white supremacy. They're one of the administrative arm of white supremacy's fingers. That's what they are. And where black people are concerned, they're the middle finger. Oh, you thought you had some representation? Watch this. Biden's going to put a law in the books that targets black people and creates the strongest imprisonment state outside of the Soviet Union. You're going to have more people behind bars in the U.S. than in communist China. And watch how many of these dumb Negroes vote for it. Let's you know who they really work for now, doesn't it? Interesting thing is, if you look at some of the names of some of the people who voted against the crime bill, Joe Biden's law, one of the names that you see is Tom DeLay. Now, for those of you who remember Tom DeLay, back in the day, he was called the Hammer. That's the nickname that they gave him, Tom the Hammer DeLay. And the reason why was this guy was a hawk on everything. But do you know what? He voted against the 94 crime bill. Tom DeLay, he was right in there with Newt Gingrich and the rest of them. We're going we're gonna to strangle government till it's so small you can drown it in a bathtub. He was all about that. Tom DeLay is no friend of black people. Wasn't then, ain't now. But in 1994, when they put the crime bill in front of him, Tom DeLay, he said no. Tom DeLay voted against it. But Cynthia McKinney didn't. She voted for it. And, of course, you gotta have old Negro Jim Clyburn. I mean, no, no butter biscuit proceedings are complete until he shows up. Kwasi and Fume, he had an African name and a European mind. These are the people who voted for the crime bill. I mean, for God's sake, you were able to get you were able to get a better vote from Tom DeLay than you got from Bobby Rush. Now, what does that tell you? And you think that these clowns, the white supremacy, did not have its hand elbow deep in the Black Panther Party? You think that just because somebody was part of the Black Panthers or that they were affiliated with them, that somehow that meant white, that they weren't a white supremacist shill? Don't dream. White supremacy knows that whenever you set up, have a black organization, it's important to them that they got to make sure it's riddled with all kinds of informants and double agents and all sorts of agent provocateurs. Make sure you get people in there who are keeping you informed on what's going on. That's part of the reason why we operate the way that we operate here in the black media. We don't put everything out there. We do what we can to inform you and to guide you and give you the information that you need. But when it comes to what we do internally, there are a lot of things that we don't tell you about. We make it a point that we're not going to be repeating the mistakes of the past. And part of it happens to be we check people out. We are very stringent about it. We are not interested in having the biggest group. The Black Panther is one of the biggest. We're going to have an army out here. Yeah, you had an army full of traitors and turncoats. How'd that turn out? So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up, but just to remind you guys, if you want to understand how much power that we have, because without you, there is no black media. If you want to know how much power we have, CNN just got through validating it for you. 
And if you want to know how potent the talking points that you get from me, the message that you receive in places like this, if you want to know how potent it is, even a chump who works at CNN, all you got to do is just bring it up once. You ain't even got to hammer. He, that Victor, what's his name, didn't even, he didn't even hammer the point. He just brought up the truth and sentencing guidelines mandated that the states had to have harsh penalties and that you can't let anybody out of prison early for any reason. And it gave the states $12 billion to, to make them sign on to it. Simone Sanders didn't even try to say, well, uh, you know, uh, there were two or three states that didn't sign on immediately. Some of them waited about six months and she didn't even bother to argue with it. She just immediately rolled over and said, well, the crime bill's not perfect. And okay. So you're going to go ahead and repeat Joe Biden's talking point. Yeah, I think if we lean on this bastard Joe Biden, what's going to happen is the thing that he fears most, we are going to be the ones who write his page in history. That's what he's scared of. He's thinking that he's going to write his page in history and the white media is going to use their ability to amplify the lie. They're going to act as a they're going to act as a signal booster for him. And that hopefully they're going to lie to people and say, well, Joe Biden, yeah, he bumped elbows and he was best chums with all sorts of segregationists. And yeah, one of the most rabid white supremacist, anti-black racists in American history, Senator James Eastland, that was Joe Biden's mentor, a dyed in the wool neo-Confederate. And this was Joe Biden's mentor. And this was the guy who put Joe Biden on the Judiciary Committee to begin with, which was where Joe Biden's career really took off. And yeah, Joe Biden never met a segregationist that he didn't like. He damn sure didn't meet one that he ever fought against. And he never met a black person who he didn't have harsh words for or didn't have something that he was attacking them over. Oh, but don't worry. He's not as bad as all that. The white media says so. No, the days of the white media having carte blanche to just tell whatever lie they want and nobody corrects them and nobody challenges them. That day is done. And yeah, we know that the candidates that white supremacy put on the ballot, they're not about to walk into the lion's den of the B1 brigade. They're not about to engage with the black media, but what we're proving to the bastards is they don't have to. We are setting up a scenario and we are going to promote a scenario where they cannot run from this message. That's where you guys come in. Wherever Simone Sanders goes, she needs to be confronted with this. Confront her with those truth and sentencing laws. Confront her with that $12 billion confront her with the deliberate disparity between the penalty for crack cocaine versus powder cocaine, and then confront her with old Hunter Biden's lifelong addiction to cocaine. And how come this bastard hasn't spent a day in prison even once? Go ahead and bring up, hey, forget about low time for cocaine possession. Hunter Biden has spent no time in prison. Somebody needs to be confronting those guys. Now, the black media, we can do a lot of things, but we can't be everywhere at once. With you guys, we don't have to. You got a cell phone and you actually have the ability to look up where these people are going to be. They need to be made to answer the tough questions. We need to make it clear to people that we're going to be blasting this message. We don't have to wait for the white media to have some CNN soundstage goofball who asks one softball question and then walks away. As soon as she flubs the answer, he goes, okay, moving on. No, what we require is a video library of showing over and over again how black media can make, it, can make the spot hot for these guys. Make it where we interfere with their ability to operate. They don't get to operate with impunity anymore. Simone Sanders is going to be made to have to answer a question that she ain't got an answer for. And it's going to happen over and over again. And it won't just be this. It's going to be across the board. Gee, how come every time we look up, you seem to find some old white man who is not going to do anything for black people, who spent his entire life taking from black people, spent his entire life weaponizing the legislature against black people, and you just keep on working for these guys. Why should we listen to you? How much you getting paid, Simone? Dozen pieces of silver for what's left of your rotted, decayed, musty soul? Is that what it was? Yeah, we got, we got her number. Just like we had Kamala Harris's number. And there's not going to be any running from this truth. The days of hiding in a soundstage or you're going to go talk to some friendly folks like Big Bird or talk to the breakfast schlubs. Those guys are only going to be able to show how scared they are of the real questions, how these guys are running from their records and how you're not going to get anything. They expose themselves. 
These white media black bootlick shills, they just expose themselves. And we are the ones who continue to do the exposing of them. We're holding these bastards up and making it clear. You can't listen to these guys. But more importantly than that, for the black folks who like to actually be informed, for black folks who actually value information, you're not going to get any better than the black media. You're just not. Oh, you can go ahead and wait till the white media finally stops tripping over its shoelaces and they finally get around to reporting it days and days later. You can go ahead and, you can go ahead and wait for them. You can go ahead and always be the last to know. You can be the person who's always bringing up the rear. That's fine. But just understand, we're entering an era now where the people who are still trusting the white media to tell them things, the people who are still relying on the white media for their information, and well, if the white media says it, well, that must be true. And yeah, it must be the states and local governments who were responsible. Surely it can't be anything that old Uncle Joe did. Those of you folks who go for that crap, you guys ain't going to make it. And you shouldn't make it. Because I have no interest in seeing the weak and the stupid inherit the earth. It's time for the smart and the strong to reclaim their birthright and their legacy. And that starts here in this place. It starts with you. We're not going to sit back and hope that the white media, once every blue moon, goes ahead and speaks some truth and asks some tough questions. They'll do it. And as soon as they realize, whoa, we're kind of we're kind of crippling these guys a little bit. You know, we're, we don't want to look totally stupid because we know that these questions are out there, but we're not trying to take any of them down, mind you. We don't need the white media deciding to call off the game on account of fairness. We need a black media that's going to be in there to make sure that these bastards don't get to run from what they've done. And the best way to make sure that they don't run is for you guys to get involved. There is no way you're going to hand this off to the white media. If we don't do it, it doesn't happen. So family, you make sure that you internalize the talking points that you hear in places like this. You make sure that you listen to what we say because we're giving you the jewels, okay? We're giving you the talking points. We're handing you the verbal and rhetorical weapons that you need in order to slay the lies. And you see how effective our talking points are. Even a half-wit can't get it wrong. It's time for you guys to be marching out there and being our street soldiers to confront these liars and make sure you get it on video. We're going to have it where we take control of the discourse. We take control of it top to bottom. And ain't going to be anybody calling for a commercial break.